Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Splitsy DIY. And when it comes to Euro accents, it's not just the modules that can be crazy expensive. It's also the cases. Uh, they can just be out of control. Um, a lot of them are made really nice, but probably if you're looking for a budget thing, uh, they might be kind of bulky. They might not, they might take up a lot of space while also not giving you the space that you're looking for. So that's why I decided to build my own. Uh, and that's what this video is going to be about today. But first, with the pandemic, people are really struggling right now. If you're one of the lucky ones, consider donating items, money, or food to your community's food banks, shelters, or other local programs. If you aren't sure where to start, resources will be down in the description. It all started in Fusion 360. One night when Nay and I were hanging out, I was like, I really want to build a Eurorack case. And he's like, well, let's go into Fusion and sketch it out. So that's what we did. The design is based on this Moog or Moog case uh, that I really liked the aesthetic of um, because it had wood and these like kind of geometric side panels holding everything together. The design uses two sets of 84 HP rails. You could easily adjust the supporting wood beams uh, for longer rails though. Since I don't have access to a laser cutter or a CNC, I had the acrylic fabbed through Pinoco. I'd never used them before. I'd heard good things from they. Um, and it, it worked great. Uh, I, I was super happy with that. Um, and they have a lot of different acrylics to choose from. I went with a slightly obnoxious blue and purple swirl because those are some of my favorite colors. And then you add in that it's like the swirl. I mean, I had to, because I envision this case will keep me well cased for quite some time. Um, and I wanted it to look really nice. So I went with that, but don't feel that you have to do something obnoxious <laughs> if, you're, if you're going through them. They have some very tasteful things as well. But now for the fun stuff, the woodworking. I started by cutting a template out for the side panels with the Cree Cut. Uh, this was great because later it allowed me to have the correct location for the drill holes all set. Um, I'd never really experienced that before. Usually you have to measure and all that, but it was, it was just right there because I was able to cut out with paper. I was able to make a couple of them. It was nice. I decided to use walnut for the build. I cut down a five by 24 inch piece that was a quarter inch thick into four pieces for the panels. Using a scroll saw, I cut the panels out with the template glued on with a glue stick on top of painter's tape that was wrapped around the wood. I'm new to the scroll saw, but this technique worked really well. I got a couple books, they kind of recommended this. Uh, and the reason why is the tape's adhesive actually lubricates the blade while you're cutting and makes it a lot easier to cut, uh, which is really nice. Also protects your wood from the glue stick from your paper or spray adhesive, so then there's less sanding and cleanup after. Painter's tape uh, became one of my favorite materials during this project, by the way, as you're about to see. Then using that template, I marked where the holes need to be for drilling using this lovely vintage marker I found in uh, my basement. Um, I used painter's tape again to be able to better see the mark and also protect the wood from tear out from drilling. Uh, these holes are four millimeters since the rails accept M4 screws for fastening. There are two pieces of wood that act as kind of support pieces and hold the acrylic sides together uh, on the bottom. These were cut from another five by 24 inch piece of walnut that was a half inch thick. I used a jigsaw to cut these down since I, it was a long cut, just going, going straight down there. For finishing, I cleaned up the edges of the panels to round the edges out and get rid of any obvious bumps from when they were cut. Uh, someone will probably tell me I shouldn't have used a palm sander like this, but hey, it worked really well. I used shellac as the finish. Uh, three coats on the front of the panels and one on the back. I did two coats on each side of the support beams. I sanded in between the coats and I really recommend David Picciuto's video on shellac application. I'll link it down in the description. In general, I just really enjoy his videos. Um, I think he has just a really nice way of approaching uh, video creation and just being creative in general. It's just very refreshing. The shellac, which is one of my favorite words to say, uh, really brought out the character and color of the walnut, which is exactly what I was looking for with this. I wanted this case to look nice and classy. Then it was time to drill the holes for the support beams. I fastened one of the rails with two panels to be able to place the beams with the acrylic. Uh, this was a great moment because everything fit properly for length with the rails, which was very exciting. You know, you, you measure and you reference the Fusion 360 file and 
you hope it's going to be okay, but that real world application of holding the rail up to the beam and seeing, oh man, it, it's going to fit. And then it, it was, it was, it was great. <laughs> I, I was pretty hyped. Again, I used painter's tape to draw the drill marks and protect the wood. Uh, I drilled one side first for each of these beam pieces and then attached them to the acrylic. And then I drilled the other side using the acrylics holes as a guide. This way I knew everything would be lined up properly, especially for the back beam, which sits at kind of a funky angle. I didn't want it to be off and crooked. So having it already attached on one side made it so that the other side would follow suit in the correct orientation. After the beams were in place, it was time to attach the rails and panels. I used a module to make sure the top rails were spaced properly. Uh, this was another moment of truth that showed stuff was fitting together. Now for the bottom, I kept my rack assembled and just attached it that way. I figured it's already spaced out, why take it all apart? Uh, overall, this went well, uh, but because everything was so solid at this point, um, the final screw for the rail took some coaxing to line up properly, to say the least. Uh, nevertheless, I persisted and eventually everything was attached properly and looking good. And here it is, <laughs> the fully assembled case. This is exactly what I wanted to build. Like even the angles and everything, like it, it's exactly, I, I, I couldn't be happier. I've also rearranged my modules so that all the noise making modules are at the top, the utilities are at the bottom. And I've even been able to put like the mixer up here, uh, which is how you mix all those tones together. And then I have this module here that allows you to use guitar effects pedals with Eurorack. Um, and so that's nice that it's on the edge now. So it's like minimal cabling running everywhere. So it keeps everything kind of nice and neat on the synth shelf. And then can also have power up here in the top corner and that's running off too. So it just really neatens everything up. Um, and I, I want it to be nice and open in the back. So in case if I needed to like install a new module or like move power around, I didn't have to rip everything apart. Most, a lot of cases are just totally closed in boxes, which I get, I understand, but like, I, I like being able to have access. Um, and of course, this has opened up um, a lot more room for activities than I had before. Um, I'm not looking to fill that in uh, because I have rent to pay, uh, but a lot of people will do blank panels. And so I, this morning I 3D printed this one with some uh, art on it. And uh, this was kind of a fun thing to do a Fusion 360. Uh, so I think uh, maybe next week a video on, on that and I'll, I'll make some more panels to try to fill in some of the space just so it's not so open. But yeah, really happy with how this is uh, both ergonomically, these are nice angles, and also aesthetically, like, could not be happier. I hadn't ever done a woodworking project where the dimensions mattered so much, and it wasn't just wood fitting with wood, it was like other materials that have very set dimensions, like the rails and the acrylic, and having it all come together. And the fact that the panels were also had to be shaped a certain way, like that was, that was, that was really huge. Um, I've, I've just never done anything like that from scratch. That was like my own design, but I'm definitely excited to do more woodworking. That's always been a goal of mine for, for years. I'm finally starting to amass the tools and also the space to be able to do this. Uh, and especially the scroll saw. I really want to do a lot more with the scroll saw. It's just a really fun tool to use. Big thanks to Nay for helping me uh, kind of sketch through the ideas, um, think through the measurements and how I was going to assemble this thing. It was great to be able to talk it through with someone because over the summer I had designed up uh, a case idea, but afterwards I kind of stepped back, look at it, realized it wasn't the best idea. So being able to chat it through someone who has also kind of knew it would working like I am as well, like just, it was really, it was a really good experience. And also, he was very patient as he um, designed up the, um, the Z rails uh, thing from their technical drawing. That, that was quite the feat. So I'm glad it's on GrabCAD now for others. By doing all of that ahead of time and having the dimensions, it really made the actual assembly and build process a lot easier. 
Um, so I definitely recommend that, especially if you're maybe new to the woodworking side of things, but you've maybe done 3D printing stuff. It's a nice way to use the skills you've amassed um, on that end of fabrication and bring it um, to a new medium. Also this past weekend, I did some sewing as well. Um, and it just reminded me again, how similar sewing and woodworking are. Uh, just in terms of thinking about assembly and cuts and everything like that. Like, I don't think that gets talked about enough, like just how similar the two mediums are. I think because one is um, associated um, as far as gender norms go as like sewing is women and woodworking is men. Of course, that is not true. <laughs> um, it's just a thing that society uh, really pushes. And so I think because of that, the, there may not be as many folks who have done both. Uh, and just the more I do woodworking, just the more I realize my sewing skills are transferring over, even with something like cutting with the jigsaw, similar to sewing on a straight line. But anyway, that, that's, that's a story for another day. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, the design files for um, this rack are gonna be up on GitHub and Thingiverse. So you can either make it yourself or you can take the design files, remix it. These, I'm sure this design could be used for things other than synths. Um, I know that's kind of a niche thing, but yeah, if you do make something, um, let me know. Um, thank you for watching. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.